0.93.95, and it's a two high PC muons. You see the energy of these muons, and in variant mass, it's 3.1 G. Therefore, we say that this is a change site candidate. Okay, and this is the number of the jade side uh, candidate we observe for this integrated luminosity. So here I plot environment mass distribution of dimion, opposite charge muon pairs with successful vertex fit. And we also require that one of the muon candidate uh, needs to be combined. Combined, it means that we have uh, two systems in order to reconstruct muons. We have an inner detector, so we reconstruct track with the inner detector, and we have a muon spectrometer system, we reconstruct track standalone and muon spectrometer system, and then we match the tracks, and then we perform global feed in order to improve uh, track parameters. So this we call combined muon. But sometimes we have low PT muons, low energy muons. Okay? So we have track in the inner detector, but we don't have enough heat in the ion spectrometer in order to reconstruct neon spectrometer tracks, okay, because of magnetic, because of the bending of the neon and magnetic field. So, but it's a neon, and we would like to reconstruct this neon because we need more statistics. So what we are doing, we take the inner detector track and we associate this track with neon spectrometer hits in the first layer of the neon spectrometer. So we cannot perform combined fit, and for this, so it's only association. And for this type of muons, we call tag muons. So it's a low quality uh, associ association or low quality muons. So in this analysis, we perform at least, uh, we require that at least one muon is a combined muon and second muon can be tag muon. Okay, so what is important here is that we uh, <coughs> see a jade type, and this is our measurement, and we compare this measurement to PDG uh, value. And this is the resolution. <coughs> okay, next slide. So, first of all, I'm going to present the first bit physics measurement. It's a differen differential G type production cross section in beams of PT and rapidity. And this measurement was done for this integrated luminosity. So, this measurement was done last summer. In principle, in principle we have update for this measurement, but it's not approved results, therefore I'm not allowed to present you this uh, result. And the second measurement is a ratio of non prone to prone production cross section versus uh, uh, PT. Okay, so how to measure uh, production cross section? It's a simple, we just have to count jade size, right? We would like to know how many jade size we have in the detector. But what we count, what we see in the detector, it's not what we have, right? Because we have a reconstruction efficiency, detector acceptance, trigger efficiency. So we have to take it into account in order to know, in order to calculate how many initially jade size particles we have. So therefore, we say that each GHI candidate is multiplied by weight to recover true number of the GHI. And this is the weight. And we have a different component in this weight. We have, first of all, we call it GHI kinematic acceptance. It's a detector acceptance and spin alignment. We will talk about it. Then we have a muon reconstruction efficiency in the beams of energy T, rapidity, and phi and also trigger efficiency. So once we know all these components, we can calculate production cross section. So let me start with the detector acceptance. The detector acceptance is defined as probability to have both muons from J side in detector volume. So here you can see the map of reconstructed J size. So this is the PT of J side, energy of J side, and this is the rapidity. And we just count how many jade size we have. For example, the, the blue one, it corresponds to one. It means that in this volume, here I saw one reconstructed jade size. And in this volume, I have many jade size. Okay? So I just would like to see where we can reconstruct jade size and where we cannot. So you see that we have a certain regions where we cannot reconstruct jade size at all because we have a low PT muons and they cannot reach muon spectrometer 
and it means that we cannot reconstruct muons and we cannot, uh, we cannot reconstruct J size in these volumes. And this is a correspond to low PT and low rapidity region. Okay, and then we check uh, acceptance map. Acceptance map is determined by Monte Carlo events with this generator level cut in order to emulate uh, detector acceptance. And uh, what does it mean, acceptance mass? It's in principle efficiency, right? This is what we uh, generate. Then we run through reconstruction. And then we actually plot this map, which says that in this region, so re the efficiency acceptance is a 10%. And in this region, it's a 70%. And then, for example, in this region, the majority of the GHI are reconstructed in low PT at high rapidity area. This is what we saw from the previous plot. But in this area, kinematic acceptance of Atlas is quite low. Okay? And therefore, we have to take it into account. We have to take original number of the GHI in this region and multiply it by this, uh, this acceptance. And by the way, the Monte Carlo in this case we use is simulated with a zero polarization. We know that the JX site has a polarization, but we don't know the production mechanism. We don't, we don't know the polarization. Therefore, we, in this Monte Carlo, we use polarization zero. Okay. Ah, by the way, I just also have to explain this one. So actually, in order to take into account this acceptance, we actually divide the whole map to these regions and then we take number of the gypsum in each region and multiply it by acceptance from each B. Okay, so as I already said, the polarization is unknown, so how to take into account the polarization effect? Because polarization effect can um, give a different, uh, different acceptance max. So we perform the measurement under assumption of the different uh, spin alignment scenario. We have a flat alignment, longitudinal alignment, and transfer uh, alignment, and we assign appropriate systematic uncertainties. So this is how we perform it. Because we do it in this way, because as I said, we just don't know what is the polarization. It's unknown, but we know that it exists. Therefore, we would like to see how it will affect our measurement. And this is a just a reminder why spin effect uh, from where it comes. Okay? This is the definition of the polarization angles. And we know the GXI acceptance proportional to the polarization angles, and polarization angles proportional to the spin alignment, and spin alignment of GXI depends on the production mechanism, which is unknown. Therefore, we do what I explained. And this is, again, an example of difference in the acceptance depending on the different spin alignment scenario. So I present here the acceptance map for the flat polarization and longitudinal polarization. And you can see that we, we see the different efficiencies in the different regions. It means that we do have a different uh, result which we have to take into account. Okay, here I just give a brief uh, explanation of the trigger efficiency, which is calculated relative to the offline reconstruction efficiency. And uh, this is a just explanation how we did it, but finally what is interesting is this result. So for GXI, this is a transverse momentum above with GV efficiency, trigger efficiency is a 95%, and for low PT GXI, we assign uh, this efficiency depending on the region. Okay, and uh, finally, this is the number of the JXI candidate. Again, it's for 9.5 uh, inverse nanobar. We have 710 plus minus 34 JXI, and this number of JXI we use in the calculation of the production process. Okay, what is interesting here to show is that, well, so uh, this is the number of the background under GXI uh, peak, and they perform the maximum likelihood fee to the derived number of the GXI candidates. So what actually we did, again, you remember that I told you that we had a different efficiency, so different acceptance in, 
the different regions of the acceptance map, so we have to actually divide our J side in the different regions. Okay, so for each uh, bin, we plot invariant mass of the J side, and then we have a weight distribution of, of, of correction weight, and then we apply this. This is actually our acceptance. Okay, acceptance in each uh, region, and then we correct uh, number of the J side for each region using uh, our weight function. And this is the final result. So you can see uh, production cross-section of the J side as function of the J side ET, and also we have a different, uh, three different rapidity uh, regions. So we, have, we see that the shape of the distribution is in good agreement, but there is a problem that we have to scale our Monte Carlo. So the shape is a, it's a good region, uh, it's, it's a good agreement, but we probably don't understand something in our production because we use a different uh, scale factors. Okay, and the next measurement that we perform, it's a ratio of the non-prompt component to the prompt GFI component, and this is actually, this is the ratio. So, what is important here, in order to separate between prone component and non prone component, we use a uh, several proper decay time, this one. So this is the mass of the J side, momentum of the J side, transfer momentum of the J side, and this is the projection of the light distance of the J side on the uh, its, uh, transverse momentum. So we use um, proper time in order to separate between prone component and non prone component, and we use also invariant mass distribution in order to separate between pure background and uh, J side candidate. So we perform simultaneous feed of invariant mass and proper time. And as I said, invariant mass in order to separate between signal and background, and then proper time in order to separate between prone component and non prone component. And this is what actually more or less we did. So we start with invariant mass, okay, and we define signal region and sidebands. Why we use information from the sidebands? Because we know that it's a pure background, right? So once we know the behavior of the background, it means that we know the behavior of the background in the signal region. So therefore, we first of all close the proper, uh, set the proper time, proper time for background in the signal, uh, from the sideband region, so we know how to model our background, and then we actually, once we know uh, the background, we know how to model, we try to model our signal in the signal region. Okay, and this is a result. This is actually, you see, the, the ratio of the uh, non prone component to the prone component as function of the change type PT. And the result, our result that we have a good agreement between uh, our prediction and our measurement. Okay, the next uh, result. I wanted to demonstrate it's a pixel of observation. So again, we check invariant mass distribution. So we don't have actually any measurement here. It's, it's just an observation of the upsilon. So we just would like to see that we have this invariant mass. We, we see the upsilon. And um, right now, we also have a node as a preparation for the upsilon uh, production cross section, but it's not approved, so I cannot present this result. But here, actually, we see uh, upsilon system, we have three upsilons, upsilon 1s, s 3s, so we see three of them, and it's a good agreement with our prediction with the Monte Carlo. Okay, the next result I also wanted to demonstrate is observation of the B plus minus, which decays to J phi uh, KO. So what we did here, so first of all, we reconstruct J phi. And then we assign a K on mass, so we add extra track in order to reconstruct B plus and B minus. And this is 
intersection invariant mass distribution of the dimion plus x contract. And this is all together. So this is a b plus and b minus together. And again, what is important here in this stage is that we have a good agreement between our measurement, the position of the peak to PDG results. And we also check the resolution of B plus B minus. <coughs> and this is our, actually, uh, this is the last result that I want to, de to demonstrate that we also capable to reconstruct uh, D mesons. And uh, here I present, this is a D star plus, which decays to D0 pi plus, and then D0 decays to K or pi. So first of all, what we did in this, uh, in this study, we reconstruct K on pi. So to reconstruct K on pi, we use only inner detectors. Therefore, you see a lot of background. It's a very small bit, because we don't have extra system in order to reject background but we do see D0, and then we add extra track. So in principle here, I present difference between mass of the K on pi on pi on and K on pi on, in order to see the difference. And then we compare it again, our measurement to results from the PDG. And we see good agreement. And to extra D mesons, it's a D S plus, so finally, we have three tracks. Again, here you can see that we have very, how to say, we have a lot of background. And we have a lot of background because we use only information from the inner detector track. We have a lot of inner detector tracks. So once we do all these combinations, we have a lot of combinatorial <coughs> background. But we do see the peak and we can, uh, we can measure the mass. And in this case, it's a D plus, which decays to also K min, uh, K on, and two pi on. Okay, and you can also see variant mass of D plus. And again, we compare the, our measurement with the PPG result. Okay, so this is more or less what I wanted to present. And um, this is our plan. This is what you would like to do this year and next year for in, in business group. And uh, a lot of things which we have to check and we have to measure. And we actually have already, as I said, several papers almost ready, but I cannot present this. We, have, we do have interesting results, but I'm not allowed to talk about it because it's not uh, approved yet. And uh, if it will be approved before next week, I will add it in my slide. But if not, so I will present what happened. That's all. Questions? Okay. Uh, your low PT neon reconstruction efficiency is too low, right? It's like 57 percent. Uh, it depends on the yes. I mean, what you have here. 57, it was for trigger efficiency. Okay? Was the uh, PT of J style below 6 GB. This is the efficiency we have. But yes, I mean, yes, you're right. Does it you match bias um, uh, your results? Does no, it it's not biased our results because we take it into account. If we don't take it into account, it will bias our results.